Hello, welcome to Isa Snora Snores by Carol L. Power, published by Black Rose Writing. Here we take snippets from the book and bring them to life. Last time we were in the middle of Isa Snora's loud baptism day with her crying and snoring. Grandmother Rosalind worried that things were not going to go well for the young family. Let's see if she was right. Isa Snora's christening celebration lasted long into the night. When everyone left, a very tired Sir Calum and Lady Morella locked the doors. They wondered what problems their snoring infant would bring upon the family. The answer to their question arrived sooner than they wished. Lady Morella told Sir Calum to go to bed. She scooped up the snoring infant and opened the door to ten towering knights in chainmail. Their frowns quickly melted into smiles when they saw the tiny Isa Snora. Lady Morella looked up at the tall knights and asked, What brings you out this late at night? Is there trouble? The knights did not hear anything that Lady Morella said. Sir Gaineth, the head knight, held out his arms, which were covered in metal, and said, what a sweet wee one. May I hold her? Isa Snora's mother hesitated. His helmet was open at the mouth, and she was surprised to see soft pink lips and small but straight white teeth. Certainly not the face of an evil knight. Please? Perhaps, but you must come in from the cold. Sir Gaineth, Sir Tyrwith, and Sir Merrymirth began fighting over the baby. Sir Gaineth said, you held her already. Sir Tyrwith, who was called the Crying Knight, said, <laughs> She makes me smile. The knight, Sir Merrymirth, reached for the baby and said, Ha 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 ha! That is a surprise. It's my turn to hold her. Sir Merrymirth took the baby. She looked very teeny next to the beefy knight. He lifted her above his head. She drooled on his balding scalp. The other knights howled in laughter. <laughs> You've been christened. Finally, Isa Snora's mother cleared her throat and held out her arms. It's not good for the baby to be up so late. Perhaps you should be on your way. Of course. I'm trying to remember why we came here. Sir Highbroth, another knight, stepped forward and said, we heard monstrous clanging and crashing, and the king's household couldn't sleep. Sir Highbroth felt superior to all the other knights. He puffed out his tiny shoulders and tapped his temple. He had serious work to do, and it did not include holding a baby. Sir Highbroth continued speaking. What is worse is glass is shattered everywhere, and people are struck with some strange malady of scratching and laughing. If this continues, surely the kingdom of Kalaland will fall apart before our very eyes. You were the blockhead who thought the raging was coming from in here. Sir Highbroth refused to let Sir Gaineth insult him. He stood his ground. He thought he should be in charge, not the goofy Sir Gaineth, who kissed babies. Let us at least look through the cottage to see if anyone or anything is hiding. The knights marched noisily through the little home. Once they were satisfied, they clattered out of the door. Isis Snora's eyes were beginning to droop, so Morella patted her back and spoke to the knights. I hope there are no dangerous creatures afoot. Heard a dragon may have stirred from the black cave. Have no worries, we will protect the king's subjects. The knights left, and Lady Morella shut the door. Sir Calum appeared, frowning. They'll be back. Will they be back? What will happen to Isis Snora and her family? Stay tuned for next week's episode, and we'll find out. I'm Elizabeth Power, your narrator. Your director and producer was Carol L. Power. You may purchase the entire book of Isa Snora Snores at Black Rose Writing, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon. Thank you for listening. Cheers.